Hello, men and nerds. It's Rob Martin again, and today I would like to talk to you about why I am an Anabaptist. Now, that may seem to be a rather stupid question to begin with. After all, my blog name is Abnormal Anabaptist. I use the label for myself quite frequently. I operate within the bounds of something called the Anabaptist Collective on Facebook. Our Men and Nerds page is all about Anabaptism. So why am I asking that question? Well, I kind of like what Will had to say about the labels we apply to ourselves and about the labels that other people apply to us. Anabaptism and Anabaptist being one of those labels that was applied to a very specific group of people during a very specific time in history. And yet the label has stuck around and has taken on whole new meanings. In fact, there's lots of conversations we have sometimes on Facebook and Twitter and such things to ask the question, what does it mean to be an Anabaptist? What, how do we define that? What do we make that kind of note about? And that's a very good question, because it's so fluid. Some people have one interpretation, some people have another. And it's very hard to say which one is which, which one is correct, which one is the one that we should use. And I get the feeling sometimes that maybe we get so caught up in the labels that we forget what the real meaning is. What was Anabaptism all about in the first place? Anabaptism was about trying to restore the church to be more than just an institution, more than just a set of rituals and ceremonies and sacraments and ordinances and such that were performed on a regular basis without any real connection to a spirituality and to an actual lived out walk of belief and faith. That's what Anabaptism really is. And it was such a varied sense of things back then in the first place that you have many different people who were given the label Anabaptist, but they were not necessarily all related. The Anabaptists in the Netherlands with Menno Simons and Dirk Williams looked a lot different than, than the Anabaptists that, well, Munster, say, enough said. So what is it with the labels that we're using? I think Will's got it right on the head. We, I, the labels have a certain place and a certain time, and they can mean a certain thing. But I wonder if in our, oh, I don't know, dependence on modernity and about categorizing and classifying and all those kinds of things about putting a label on something and then the label defines the thing rather than the thing clarifying the label. For example, what's a reptile? Okay, well, we have uh, things that are alligators and lizards and such like that. That's a reptile. Okay, what's a mammal? Well, mammals give birth to live young, and they feed, and they and they don't have uh, feathers or anything like that. Um, what's a bird? A uh, bird has a bill and lays eggs. What's a platypus? Yeah, see, now the f lines start getting blurred. In modernity, we like to classify things, we like to categorize things, and we like to put things in nice, neat categories. And things are not necessarily in nice, neat categories. I think the only category that really matters when it comes to Christianity is are you following Jesus? Are you seeking him? Are you following in his spirit? Are you working at the things that he was interested in? Going beyond just the, as uh, was pointed out, the soteriological idea of things, how do you get saved? But even the full gospel of what does it mean to serve others? What does it mean to love God? What does it mean to go beyond the... Uh, what the world thinks we should do with our enemies and actually love them for who they are. Lots of different things going on there. And I think if we get too stuck on the label, we forget the broader picture of things. So maybe, just maybe, we need to hold a little bit less tightly to our labels and a little bit more strongly to our Lord. Thank you.